Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over tonight's NHL slate. Um, it's a pretty big slate. They're offering quite a bit for first in several contests. And I, once again, great shout out to DraftKings for upping their uh, their hockey offerings this season. And what we're going to do is, again, we're going to go through our entire process of, of identifying possible teams that could be viable then breaking it down by our sheets and then looking at our stack uh, rankings. And we're going to then build a hand-built lineup. And then we are going to then uh, use SaberSim to build two separate sets of lineups, one using their Saber score and secondly using, um, using their contest simulator. Uh, for those of you to watch this, I'm also going to be doing a, a live – Actually, I'm not going to be doing it live. I'm going to do a recording of, of the late swap. Uh, I am a, I'm going to have the Saberson uh, family on to kind of walk me through that. So I really haven't figured out exactly what I'm doing yet uh, as far as late swap using the live contest sim data. But so we're going to get a little something for everybody. We're going to go, you know, from the most primitive to all the way out to the most fancy of, of building these lineups. So we're first just looking at the Saber Sim just kind of matrix here to see what teams kind of rate to have you know good opportunities. I mean we're just looking at the at the the goal, the implied goal odds here or the implied goal lines, and you'll see that Detroit is they have a four, and whenever you're at a four, that's really really good. Tampa's three point eight implied goals, um, Dallas three point eight, uh, Colorado three point eight. Wow, LA 3.8, Edmonton 4.3. Wow. So there's a lot of fantasy points probably that are going to be out there today. So we have to stay sharp. Uh, let's uh, pull up my sheets, which again are usually you know, uh, available on True DFS or premium members. And we're listing all these guys and we're going to rank them in terms of sheets value score, which for those of you that haven't been here before, kind of a combination of both fantasy points and points per dollar. Um, it's a little formula that kind of accounts for the fact that, you know, point per dollar rankings usually overcompensate the, or over reward the, the, the cheapos where it's just straight fantasy points kind of over reward the, the higher salary players. So sheets value sort of, sort of normalizes that in a way. So what we're going to look at is we're going to just give a nice kind of really quick look at these dudes and see which guys rate high that are on the same team and which guys rate high that are on the same lines because obviously that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to find good lineups with good correlation. And in hockey, you want as many guys on the ice as you can together because one will pass to the other who will pass to the other who will score a goal. And that shot on goal will just reward everybody. Um, well, the shot won't reward everybody, but if it goes in, it will certainly reward everybody, except, of course, the opposing goalie. Okay. First thing that I notice here, well, the first thing I notice is that Lucas Raymond at 4,100 looks like a really strong value play. And you'll see his ownership or his projected ownership is reflecting that. But this is this is something to keep in mind, whether it be, you know, setting him up for, for, a, for a full line stack or even as a one-off. I mean, this is a very, very strong play here. The other thing I'll notice is, okay, so you have McDavid, Hyman from Edmonton, and then Dreisaitl. You have three of the top 15 all coming from the same team. So that's really strong. And then you have Bouchard as well. So let's see if they're all on the same line. So Bouchard's on the second regular straight line, but first power play, same with Dreisaitl. And then Hyman, 1-1, one, one, and then McDavid, 1-1. One, one. So you can play all four of those guys if, in fact, you can get them in. Now, they're all very expensive, um, but we'll see. We'll see if we can get them in. I'm already thinking. I'm looking at this Lucas Raymond, and if you could make kind of a Detroit stack to go with Edmonton, you might be able to get the Edmonton guys in. All right, next thing I'll notice, uh, Jason Robertson, top overall play on the slate. Let's see where his, his Dallas roommates are. You, know, uh, you have Rupe Hints. He looks pretty good down here. Where's the next Dallas guy? Not not till goalie. 
So it looks as though Dallas as an overall stat might not be great, even though Robertson himself looks like a very, very strong player. So, so far it looked like Edmonton is what you want. Let's, let's inspect. We'll get back to Colorado in a minute. Let's, let's inspect this Detroit a little bit more. So you see Lucas Raymond is on the first, first line, first power play line. And then you see Debrinkat is also on the first line, first power play line. Larkin, first line, first power play line. So this is really, really strong. Okay. This is going to be extremely strong. And then you have, you can get, go down a little further. You have Drake, Wal Jake Wallman, who is a defenseman. And these guys are all really cheap. So you could just jam these guys in and they could be a good complimentary stack to Edmonton or let's, we'll look at Colorado or Tampa in a second. But this Detroit thing, I imagine they're going to be really, really popular. Um, so you have to consider that when you're when you're making GPP lineups. But but as far as like what looking at what the good plays are, that Detroit situation looks extremely strong. Uh, let's look at Colorado uh, only because McKinnon shows up all the way over here. I mean, not so great, I and mean, you have to come all the way down here to find Ranton in. So it looks as though Colorado is kind of the odd man out here. The Tampa, two other things I want to look at. I want to look at why this Jordan Kuru is up here for St. Louis. I don't see anybody else here. Uh, Puvenavich looks okay. Probably all second, probably second tier though. Well, let's look at Tampa. Kucherov, Stamkos, uh, not as good. So it looks as though what we like to do, at least from a handbell perspective, is play the Edmonton expensive guys with the Detroit cheap guys and just kind of be off to the races. The other thing I will see is when I look at goalies real quick, I have my one of my favorite cheap goalies who's always you know playable, and that'd be Ilya Sorokin. So let's start doing it. You know, um, before I do that, actually, let me look at the stack tool and see what this is all about. And let's see what the stack tool kind of leads us here to, to conclude. So this is the NHL stats tool. It lists the stats by three different metrics. One is by raw points. That would be over here. You can search this way. And by raw points, Edmonton's number one by a decent amount. Then you go into points per dollar, which is value. And you actually get a San Jose as a uh, kind of a cheapo over there. That's actually something to keep in mind because if you could maybe make a game stack out of Edmonton, San Jose, that might work. And then when you look under modified stack, you have Edmonton again. Um, so what this basically is a lot of ways of saying the same thing, that Edmonton looks really good. And then also you'll notice that Detroit shows up as playable uh, in both raw raw points and in modified stacks. So, uh, you know, this is the way I look at the, the, the slate every day, okay, is, is I start from the team totals, then I go from the bottom up, and I look at the stacks, and then I see what makes sense. And right now, I think we've all can come to an agreement that Edmonton plus Detroit might be the best, the best play. Now, again, we're not talking about ownership or anything like that, but let's take a look and see how we would build this. I guess let's just start by by being greedy. Let's let's jam these top Edmonton guys in. That would be I don't know McDavid, and then Drysidel, and Hyman, and what was it? Bouchard was the other one. Let me just say, let me just make sure it was it were those four. You might not think we can do this, but I think we can. McDavid, Hyman, uh. Who is it? Drysidle and Bouchard. I mean, let's see how cheap these Detroit guys really are. You know, let, let's see what we can do here. We can jam, we can fit these Detroit guys in. Well, the Brink hat's expensive, but oh, so it's not so easy. Crap. So you, these, man, why did I think the Detroit guys were cheap? Because I saw the one guy was cheap. I think that was it. But Lucas Raymond was cheap. Everybody else is actually expensive. That was that's my bad. So it looks as though playing the Edmontons are not going to be quite as easy, unless we do this, unless we put in that one off the Lucas Raymond, 
And then we start hunting for these San Jose characters. And we, we noticed that that was in the stack tool, uh, interesting cheapos there. So that would be, let's see if we could play those. That's a big old game stack. So we're, <laughs> I think it's the last game of the night. So we're talking to Claire, Burroughs, Granlin, LeBlanc, Vlasic, these guys. So let's see what that looks like. Well, that game didn't start till 10 30. This is craziness. Grandland is 2,900. And then who's it? Burroughs, 3,200. And then we could definitely do this. See, so who's the other San Jose guys? Um, Duclair. Did I put Duclair in already? No, it's a Duclair. You can almost do it. You can almost do it. Just not quite. Yeah, these, these Edmonton guys are rough. But you know what you can do? First, let's put in Sorokin. Let's put in Sorokin. Got to save $2,100 off of this. Well, one way to do that is to play, instead of one of these Edmontons, we'll play somebody from San Jose and make it a 4-3 with San Jose that way. And it's probably going to be good enough, right? Let's see, what other San Jose guys are there? Hurdle. Well, that's not going to work because we can't really get rid of McDavid. I mean, I wouldn't mind getting rid of, say, Hyman if there was a $4,100 guy we could play. Like, oh, like Eklund. That's the one we want to do. All right, so... There we go. So if we played Eklund, now we get a 4-3 San Jose Edmonton and the one off from Detroit. So that's this is one thing you can do. Right? Uh, and if I were hand building, this is might be what I would do. But let's let's try something else. Let, let's not be so greedy. Um what if we did the Detroit, the full stack of Detroit? What what does that allow us to do? Because Detroit's stack did look pretty good. Let's just again, we're forgetting about price now. We'll go back to Luke Raymond. We here we have to find out to bring cat, Raymond, Larkin, and then who else was there? Jake Wallman, right? That was the fourth one. And then if we played Sorokin, that would be 4,800 a man. So you could play Detroit San Jose probably pretty easily. As a matter of fact, hold on, I'm going to pause this a second. I actually had a very extended pause there. It was been a long actual time. And I forgot where I was in the video. But it looks as though I was trying to build a full Detroit stack looking for the fifth Detroit guy. Does that make sense? Okay, so let's... Sorry about that. If you had any idea how long this pause was. Um, so it looks as though Raymond, Wallman, Larkin... So Cider would be the other guy from Detroit. And that would be 5,400. So that's that's a healthy stack there. And we could probably go, once again, we could do San Jose. But we might not even have to do San Jose. You know, we can do maybe, let's look at some others. Can we fit in these Tampa guys? Probably not. That St. Oh, what about that St. Louis guy, the Jordan Kiru? 
What was he all about? Let's go back to him. Uh, let's see. He's a wing, 6,200. Is there anybody who else can be a cheapo from St. Louis to go with him? How about that? So, oh, proof of name is he's too expensive. I know that Krug's too expensive. Let's take a look at some of these other guys. Um, Shen is 3,700. Yeah, how about that? So you play Shen with Kiru with a full Detroit stack and a some 4K guy. I mean, if you you could actually play Tory Krug, except you, you can't because you you can't play. You have to play guys from three teams. Um. So another 4K guy. Let me look at my sheet here. See who's a 4K guy. Um. Marco Rossi, kind of a one-off from Minnesota. Yeah, better than nothing. No, because he's against – oh, no, I thought he was against my goalie. So we could do that. Like, for example, I'm not saying this is how you have to play. but So that's a very long way to deal with the hand-built lineups. So let's now go into Saberson and see what we would come up with there. using the same projections. I always find it interesting how sometimes SaberSim will come up with completely different things, even though they're using the same projections because it's an algorithm that knows how to build lineups rather than the human brain. Okay, so let's build, what do we say, 40 lineups? Let's just fire it up. Probably could pause while this is happening, but I'm not going to. How many lineups did I put in this? Uh, I did put in 40. Okay. Oops. But so here, it's actually getting me to all this uh, Winnipeg. Interesting. And all this Dallas. <laughs> Remember we said that Jason Robertson was rated really, really high? Well, according to Saberson, these are the stacks I'm supposed to be getting. Uh, as a matter of fact, like 77% Dallas, 35% Winnipeg. Very little Edmonton. Wow. Very little St. Uh, very little, not very little Detroit, but I mean 15%. All this Dallas, that's kind of nuts. Uh, stack exposure, mostly five twos and four threes. So, oh, interesting. The uh, first thing I would do if I were actually keeping these lineups is I would kind of make min uniques, maybe three. And I'd probably get rid of these two, 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 twos, three, twos, four, two, twos. I want to just keep the four threes, the sixes, and, and the five twos. Those in there. And this is probably what I would end up doing. Uh, oh, we don't need these. Buy this. And now let's see what the team stack situation looks like. Still a like 80% Dallas. Okay. Um, so I could I could save those for now. So let's let's go ahead and do that. Upload entries. And we'll we'll just save them all into into here. We'll duplicate these, um, but we're going to add contest sims so for our next step. So what we're doing here, for those of you who didn't know, is that 
we are adding the actual data of the contest we're entering because the contest simulator, what that'll do is run these this build of lineups against that field as SaberSim is kind of predicting it will be. So to get a better, uh, a, make a better fit of your lineups. So it's going to fit your lineups to the, you know, it's going to make sure it leverages your plays against the plays that they believe people are going to be making. Um, and again, this is very crude technology now, I have to say. Um, and in maybe three, four years, this is going to be much tighter. But it's certainly a good first attempt at all the, at the, in the whole industry to create this kind of field of lineups, you know, and all it's doing is really just taking its own ownerships and applying it to and making a fields out of it, making a field of lineups out of it. So it's using the Saber Sim ownership. So that's one thing uh, that's kind of a barrier. Like if the Saber Sim ownerships are bad, then the field of lineups is going to be bad. Okay. And that's, and once that happens, then it all kind of goes to shit. But let's see what we get here. Uh, we're going to rank the kick save, which is the um, the lottery, by uh, risk-adjusted ROI. And here's where we get Detroit, the San Jose, St. St. Louis. This is very interesting because normally it works the opposite. Normally what happens is, is the types of lineups that I get to from Saberson relative to my own work is usually only shows up when I just run you know, the, the first build, like using Saber score. Once I usually apply contest sims to it, I get all this craziness, but now it's actually reflecting my own work, which is what I really like. So this is something I might actually keep. So we're going to save these to the kick save. Boom. And then we will also rank these by uh, re-entry max. And you get a totally different type of lineup there, which is okay. We'll save that to the blue line. Boom. And then we will do the Thursday night ice, which is very similar to the um, to the other one, by the way. Let's put this in. Thursday Night Ice, put that in. Now we will download all of these, edit entries, these in. We should be off to the races. I'm curious how long this video actually turned out to be because it took like many hours to do it only because of my pause. Uh, but hopefully this 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 helps you uh, figure out uh, a good or develop a process where you can uh, build lineups using the tools available to you on TrueDFS or other places. Um, and listen, these are probably not the lineups I'm actually going to play at the end of the day because goalies will change, lines will change, spread you know everything will change. But uh, again, I want to give you guys the opportunity to see a process uh, in motion. Uh, that'll do it. Uh, good luck, everybody.